Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. Let's talk about Strix Point, shall we? Because these upcoming next-generation APUs are going to be absolutely mind-blowing from AMD. They will render low-end GPUs, perhaps even mid-range cards, pretty much useless, actually. And they are shaping up to be absolutely phenomenal. Well, we actually have a benchmark and some confirmation regarding some of the specifications, thanks to a benchmark of sorts that's popped up online. Before we go any further, I'd like to give a courtesy credit to bench leaks on twitter i actually follow them and they put out some really excellent stuff so milky way at home is well a kind of distributed computing platform test platform that amd also use now of course the problem is stuff sometimes happens basically scores get leaked online and of course configuration information starts to become available on any of these benchmarks we've seen it with geekbench this and a number of others as well now unfortunately what we don't have here is exactly the full configuration of the system but what we do have is at least some confirmation regarding some of the specifications now you can spot quite easily that this is an authentic amd engineer sample unsurprising this is not released uh, today and it is a recent entry so it dates basically just under a week ago the 14th of July as of the time I'm recording this it's a week ago anyway the number of processors is 24 however this is threads so the number of processor cores is actually 12 and the computing platform that they were using is basically a version of linux there was also 30 gigabytes of ram now unfortunately the exact configuration for example of the gpu is not listed here to my understanding i've actually got um, a video that i put out just kind of recently actually regarding strix point um, to my understanding we are looking at eight Zen 5 cores and four Zen 5 C cores, the C being dense. Although, honestly, I'm getting some mixed information. Some point out it's just the 12 Zen 5 cores and there is no dense. It's, it's a little confusing. But uh, we are looking at 16 compute units. Those are based on RDNA 3.5. I've heard that there are some really impressive clock frequencies like over three gigahertz is the target but obviously that is going to depend on a lot of things like for example final silicon and what it can be capable of producing and of course the tdp which is being uh, configured this is allegedly going to be a monolithic die i also just want to touch briefly on the other strix point uh, system as well or should i say the apu which is sarlacc um, I've again gone into this much more exhaustive detail in a video from a few, several days ago, but basically this is going to be a 16 core uh, Zen 5 CPU. Again, I'm getting mixed information whether it's 16 Zen 5 cores or whether it's 8 slash 8. Obviously Zen 5 being 8 and then the dense cores being the other 8 as you can see on screen. Um, the clock frequency is apparently pretty good, but of course, again, it will depend upon the configuration. And we are looking at up to 40 compute units, again, based on RDNA 3.5. I've discussed what RDNA 3.5 is like a billion times at this point. I'd leaked a few things myself, and then others had essentially stated that I'm pretty accurate on that. But basically, it has some elements of RDNA 4. Um, but they've basically been backported now as I've said a hundred times at this point I'm almost positive this is not going to end up in a discrete GPU so um, basically for desktop for example we go from RDNA 3 so for example the 7900 XT to whatever the next generation is going to be called from Radeon let's just call it 8900 XT or whatever but this is going to be a nice interim upgrade it's going to again allow for high clock frequencies from what i'm understanding there's going to be some improvements to the salu i think perhaps um i think it's the geometry as well gets a small upgrade so this is going to be pretty impressive there are also some ai cores as well as you can see on screen so this is going to be a very interesting product i I think that this is going to basically mean cards like, for example, the RTX 3060, possibly upwards, depending on a lot of factors, are going to be basically pointless. And it's going to be a very interesting situation because Intel are also working on Arrow Lake P, which I'll put out a video on pretty soon. But Arrow Lake P is basically Sarlacc in Intel form. So it essentially has Arrow Lake based uh, CPU cores and a crap ton of... Uh, intel you know cores as well for the gpu and it's going to be a very interesting 
uh, architecture. I will be very curious to see how NVIDIA responds to all of this. Speaking of respond, I just want to get this out there. I want to hold my hand up and say that I made a screw up actually. Um, so there was a 14th generation leak from uh, Intel CPUs and I got a couple of specs wrong. Uh, so basically we have a leak that popped up from uh, Bench Life and this is for the 14600K, 14700K, and 14900K. Now, basically, I got the 14900 and 14700K correct. However, the 14600K, uh, I basically said that it has an additional two P cores. Uh, than what it actually does and I've spoken to a couple of other sources in the video where I actually mentioned this I did say that I'd only single source that and I was not certain so do take the specifications with a pinch of salt because I was very uncertain whether they were wrong however I've since done additional checking and I'm told that it's very likely that the specs I had were based upon engineering samples and therefore, it's almost certain that the core count probably has not increased. As of the time I'm recording this, it's possible that one or two of the other lower end SKUs has increased in core count. However, I think it's very likely that this is not the case. I'm again pretty certain that the 14700K, as they have leaked and as I've leaked, does have an increased core count in the E, sorry, E core count. They've increased the E core count in the E cores, but I think the 14600 and some of the mid range and some of the lower mid range ones have not increased the core count, unfortunately. Uh, I believe it was considered, but they've not done it, which is definitely a shame. However, again, the clock frequency and stuff that I was talking about, like low 6 gigahertz, that all seems to be correct. It's basically what I said for Raptor Lake. It's not that interesting for the refresh. Um, I think at this point, unless you genuinely need a new CPU, you're probably good to go. Like if you've got like a 5800X 3D in your gaming or a 12700K, I'd probably just wait until the next generation pops out from Intel and AMD and then make your choice, for example, with the next Ryzen's or whatever. So I just wanted to take uh, discuss that and kind of bring it up because obviously I want to be as uh, honest and correct as possible. And uh, there's one final thing that I want to talk to you guys about because <sighs> I just... I just think this is kind of hilarious. So, as I'm sure just about everyone knows at this point, the RTX 4060 Ti was being released in two models. There was the 8 and the 16 gig. And basically, review samples were not easy to procure for the 16 gig. By the way, what I mean by not easy to procure is in like, no sod on earth got a review sample. So basically they went on sale. I think it was like, I think I was commenting on Hardware on Box um, uh, tweet because they were saying that they're actually buying one on Australia. So uh, MSI did some online benchmark, well streamed benchmarks and you can see yourself the results. I'm not really gonna need to read those out to you, but essentially, <laughs> There is a, well, there's just no difference. Let's just, let's just not screw around. Let's just be blunt. Um, for example, Cyberpunk with ultra ray tracing, um, the, I'm just talking about the average here, it actually scores slightly higher on the eight gigabyte model. And CSGO, it's slightly higher on um, the 16 gigabyte model, but we're talking like way over 400 frames a second anyway. So who gives a rat's ass? Fortnite, again, it's pretty much identical. Uh, Rainbow Six, well, you can argue its margin of error improved to the uh, 4060 Ti, but again, there's no real difference. However, EX Preview actually have much more in-depth results. I, I'm guessing these guys just crunched the, the numbers overnight. Unfortunately, I cannot speak Chinese, but some of the results are pretty obvious anyway. Uh, you can see the results go down, like they've got 1080p results, um, and so on and so on and so on, 1440p. Basically speaking, in terms of the performance gains, quote unquote, you get for the 4060Ti, well, they are bupkis. Honestly, at this point, there's just not a whole lot to say about this card. It is, well, let's just be honest, it's funny. It's a card. Like, it's just, it's just pretty hilarious. Um... Yeah, it's it's so expensive. Um, we're seeing this card basically be the same price as the RTX 4070. And, you know... Oh, man, oh, man. It's just... 
this is just brutal um so nvidia rightly saw being raked through the coals or over the coals what's the saying i don't know uh but yeah basically nvidia meet coals at this point um regarding this card it's not however like i think that none of the rtx 40 cards are you know are good i think there are genuinely a couple of cool releases in the rtx 40 lineup and i think the rtx 40 architecture just has a lot of potential unfortunately it's like you know the architecture can have as much potential as it you know has but if they basically are just like yeah okay we're just going to take like a hacksaw to the l2 we're going to give it less ram than is required to render i don't know let's say uh what would be a very complicated game that perhaps would be uh, a good example let's say pong on the rtx on the atari 2600 then obviously they're going to go down a little bit aren't they uh but yeah um anyway i think that's just about it for this particular video um I will be uh, returning to a more normalized upload schedule over the next uh, week or so. Basically speaking, there was just a bit of an emergency, um, which is why I haven't been on camera so much the last couple of days. Uh, one of my friends unfortunately ended up having a stroke. Uh, fortunately, they're not too they're not too bad, but uh, it kind of you know I had to like end up going up you know to where they live and just make sure they're okay and all that stuff so it was it was a bit touch and go for a while but um they're doing pretty well now with that said thanks very much guys take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now